Welcome back, Poke fans. Griefus here with Pokemon Emerald. It's our second playthrough on the channel, and I'm super pumped for you guys to see it. And while this isn't a hardcore Nuzlocke, regular playthroughs aren't really that challenging anymore, and as I continue growing and creating Pokemon content on the channel, the risks will increase. This being our second playthrough, here are the rules. Matches are set. I got a lot of comments on Fire Red suggesting I use set, and I'll always listen to the fans, so that's what I'm doing. I have to battle every trainer. That means gyms, hideouts, and routes. And there's a five level cap for the ace of the next gym. I'm gonna try to avoid exploiting that unless I absolutely have to, but I don't think I'll ever have to go more than a few levels over before I reach the Elite Four. If I white out, that equals a reset. Like I said, this isn't hardcore, but if I ever white out, I have to restart at the last new Pokemon Center I healed at. The first heal at a Pokemon Center sets the checkpoint. No legends on the team. I can catch them and put them in the box, but that's where they'll stay. And lastly, but most importantly, win or else. If I white out to the Elite Four or the Champion, that's the end of the run. Do you think I have what it takes to beat the Elite Four and the Champion? Welcome to the Grief Lock. Stepping into my first patch of grass after acquiring Pokeballs, we run into our second team member, Poochiana. I weaken it and add the scruffiest good boy to the team. I then catch a Zigzagoon I named Bandy specifically for its pickup ability. It's not going to stay on the team too long, but all the extra items I'll get from having it in my party will help until I find its replacement. I grind a few levels around Old Dale before heading to the next route. There we come across our first wild trainer battle. Youngster Calvin and his pooch is no match for my inner Michael Vick and he goes down after a few tackles. There's a few other trainers on this route that provide some easy experience for Scruffy and Tyson as I periodically check Bandy to make sure I grab all the items she picks up. I find some berry tree bushes and pick them. I'm not sure the time-based events work properly in this ROM, so being the greedy capitalist that I am, I'm just gonna pick all the berries I find without ever planting one in its place. I hope Mr. Beast doesn't see this. I then catch my very own Derpy Lotad and name him Party Boy before making it to Petalburg City. This is where Dad's gym is. I'll stop in and say hi before I leave, but I want to look around town first. I meet a man that calls me out for being a rookie and not knowing my dad's the new gym leader, escorts me to the gym and tells me to check it out. Since I'm already here, I might as well go say hi to Dad. I enter the gym and Dad is in the main foyer, unpacking the last few items, getting ready to open. We barely have time to catch up and for me to show him my Pokemon before the front door opens and a sickly looking boy enters. He approaches Dad asking for a Pokemon since he's going to go stay with some relatives for a while and doesn't want to be lonely. He's never caught one and needs some help, so Dad asks me to go with him to show him how and keep him safe. Dad lets him borrow a Zigzagoon and some Pokeballs and we head off to the nearest grass patch. We wander around for a little bit when a Ralt appears. I can see that Wally's nervous. Wally tackles it a few times with Dad's Zigzagoon weakening it and throws a Pokeball. Routes is caught. Wally can barely hold back his excitement as I smile proudly. We rush back to Dad's gym and show him Wally's new Pokemon. Wally returns Zigzagoon and thanks us for helping him catch his routes. Promising to take good care of it, he rushes home to get ready for his trip. Now that Wally was gone, Dad gave me some advice on becoming a strong trainer. Head to Rustboro and start my gym challenge. Yeah, thanks Dad kind of doing that already, but whatever. We hug and I head towards Rustboro to get my first badge. As I leave town, I'm approached by a man in some sunglasses, searching for talented trainers and runs off calling me a rookie. That was weird, but I'll show him. Now, more determined than ever, I head to Route 104 on my way to face Roxanne. Roxanne is a rock type leader, so I'm gonna need to level up Lotad and hopefully find some sort of water mod before we face her. She's got a level 15 nose pass that can be a nightmare to face if you're not prepared. I make sure to pick the berries before doing some switch training with Party Boy. I hit a patch of grass and a shiny wingle appears. Sweet! Our first shiny on the channel, and a great answer to Roxanne's nose pass. We weaken it with Party Boy and Gullet is added to the team. I accidentally encountered the beauty before the woods before healing and nearly wiped out. It would have sucked to lose Gullet. Thankfully, we pulled out the win and healed up before heading into Petalburg Woods. I take this opportunity to switch train Party Boy and Gullet on the bug trainers and wild encounters. Not long after entering, we're encountered by a man looking for shrooms. I'm not into that stuff, but his dealer shows up in the middle of our conversation saying it was a setup and to hand over some paper. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time, I'm forced to fight. He has a Poochiana, and I'm leading with Party Boy. I try to astonish it before switching out to Gullet. Three water guns are able to take it out despite being four levels lower. The Aqua Grunt is defeated and runs off empty-handed and in denial. 
The Devon researcher then gives me a great ball for helping him out and then rushes off to Rustboro to warn his team about Team Aqua. We battle the last bug catcher and his Ninkata before making it to the exit of the woods, then pick some more berries. We also found a Merrill in the grass here. While we don't need another water type, what with Party Boy and Gullet, I still decided to catch it and add it to the team for a little bit more juice against Roxanne. Everyone welcome Peekaboo to the team. For now. We enter a building and meet a lady that gives us a watering can to water berries, another Pokemon item I'm not using in my playthroughs. The sentiment is nice, so I accept the offer before exiting the building. There's a few trainers on this route. I only battle a couple to avoid wiping before I can get to the next Pokemon Center to heal. I could head all the way back to Petalburg, but that seems like a lot of effort. I'll come back and battle the trainers I skipped before facing Roxanne. I'll need all the experience I can get. We eventually make it to Rustboro, and I head to the Pokemon Center, unlocking our Next checkpoint. I explored town a little bit and found a man that gives us HM1. I decided to teach it to Bandy. If she's going to be on the team, she's got to have multiple purposes. We explore more of the city and I meet a man and his daughter. He asks if I know any funny words, so I tell him the funniest Gen 3 meme I know. She doesn't find it funny. I leave ready to start grinding for Roxanne. But Griefus, what about the trainer school? It's a key building. You get quick claw from it. I know. I was grinding off camera and went in there not thinking and triggered the event. So I got the quick claw, just not the footage of it. I'm sorry, it won't be the last time I do something similar to that on the channel or even in this playthrough, but I promise I'll get better. We start grinding the team up to level 16. Tyson is the first to evolve into a two-piece snack. Next up, Party Boy evolved, learning the art of double fisting. Now that everyone was at least level 15, it was time to face Roxanne's gym. I'm leading with Party Boy and Pika Blue at number 2. The plan is to weaken the trainers with Lombre enough that Meryl can switch in to finish, and if anything goes wrong I still have Wingle and a double kicking Combuskin in the back. The trainers are easy enough, but I did get drawn into the double battle that's always a little bit nerve wracking in this game. Thankfully the defense curling Geodudes are no match to Absorb and Water Gun. With all the other trainers out of the way, it was finally time to face Roxanne and take the next major step towards becoming the champion of Hoenn. She leads with Geodude and I choose to lead Peekaboo. I use Water Gun and Geodude goes down. She then sends out another Geodude and it goes down the exact same way. Last up is Nose Pass. It eats a Water Gun and uses Rock Tomb, taking my speed advantage. It then uses Block, so we're stuck here till one of us goes down. I use another Water Gun and it eats a Citrus Berry and tackles. I use another Water Gun and Roxanne uses a Potion. It's beginning to turn into a stall fest. I use two more Water Guns before Roxanne pops another Potion on it. I get off three more water guns, bringing it down to a sliver of health before finally going down to another rock tomb. Out comes Party Boy to absorb the rest of its life points, and Roxanne is defeated. With that, she hands us the stone badge, $1,500, and TM39. With that victory, we're one step closer to our goal. Next stop, Duford. I heard somebody's looking for a fight. 